Prior to my near-death experience, I had been exposed to black mold for months in the home I lived in at the time with my husband and son, in California. At one point, I had had pneumonia, and was traveling between my parents' home in Santa Clara County, and my home in Monterey County. My symptoms had not been diagnosed or contemplated by a physician at this point. While in Santa Clara County, I would recover, only to relapse in Monterey County upon returning home. I finally relocated to Santa Clara County. At that time, my near-death experience took place. I was losing consciousness at night. The paramedics would arrive, administer first aid and haul me off to emergency. I would be stabilized and sent home. The near-death experience happened on the third round of the repeating experience. My son dragged me about 15 to 20 feet to the wall phone and called 911. They sent fire and paramedics. They also sent the Delta Squad, the city's police unit contacted for any death circumstances. My son has been the best historian of each account. He was 17 at the time. According to him they injected my heart almost immediately, then the paddles. My heart was jump-started on repeated occasions. I do not remember the number of times, nor do I know the protocol. All the while oxygen was administered. There is an aside here that is unique to my experience. The fire captain would listen on his unit and come from wherever he was to be with my son. On this particular occasion, he arrived in casual attire, worn blue jeans and sweater, complete with slippers. My personal experience follows, let me begin by saying that the idea of pleasant emotions does not apply here. I knew exactly what was transpiring, and I was not happy. My first recollection was being in a darkened tunnel, similar to many photos that I have since viewed of deep underground tunnels in the city of New York. The light was dim. I was aware of low volume conversing around me, and the activity of groups of people walking past me as well as individuals. They were all ages. I refused to focus. The entire landscape was cast in shades of gray. Through past life regression exercises, I have learned to look down at my feet first to get my bearings. I looked down and focused upon my feet. I was barefooted. I fixed my eyes upon my feet to get into my present situation with more clarity. This took what seemed to be a few moments. When I dared to look up, I could see persons walking that were about 5 feet away. The tunnel was about 75 feet high at the center and maybe 30 feet across. At that point, a man came into my view and walked about 2 to 3 feet in front of me at a 30 degree angle, from a starting point of maybe 10 feet away. He looked like a 1940s gangland character. His nose was long and pointed. He had a white wall haircut and a face, as they say, only his mother could love. He wore a felt hat, pulled down in the style of that era. He glared at me, swerved away, and kept walking. He was all in shades of grey down to his cuffed slacks. He was scared, angry, and hostile. I looked at my surroundings. The tunnel was huge. Everyone was walking from my left to right. I was against the wall of the tunnel. No one was close to me. I became aware that I was moving, too, just with less conviction and much slower with stops and starts. Then, I became aware that the top one-third of the tunnel was beginning to fill with light from a location further down the tunnel. Yes, the light had an ethereal quality. It was a lovely, vibrant butter yellow as it became more infused across the ceiling of the tunnel. I really wanted out of there. My next recollection is of a dark room, or location that felt like a room. Pitch black dark. I am very aware that I am not alone. I also do not feel as incorporated as a physical entity. I am less certain of my form. There is a very intense struggle going on here. I am refusing to discorporate, as it were. There is intense discussion between myself and at least two other beings. I cannot see them. However, their presence is intense. There is a struggle to stay in this body. I start reciting an incantation that I was taught by my therapist that she insisted the Catholic priests used while performing exorcisms. 
I am aware of how strange and ridiculous this sounds. I can only imagine all the strange manner of things that get repeated in this questionnaire. I could barely get it out at first. I repeated it over and over. As I came to in my mother's kitchen, the sight in front of me was telling. I was pushed back against the wall. The gurney was pulled as high as it could be so it could be pushed. I was strapped in, covered thoroughly, wrapped in blankets. Standing a few feet away from me was a speechless group of four paramedics, for fire rescue crew, the Delta Squad policewoman, the fire chief and my son. Apparently, they were getting ready to declare me dead when I started shouting my incantation. I remember coming to consciousness reciting. I did not know that I had been shouting. On my end, it was a struggle to get the words out. I was taken out after they all gave me a greeting one by one. I admonished the Delta Squad woman for not taking off her sunglasses. She was, I am sure, behind those glasses hiding with relief from this strange encounter. The room simply came into focus. My son was being comforted with a strong arm around his shoulders. I asked the chief to stay with my son until everyone left. At this point, the paramedics took over. There were four young men, ages in their twenties. They all wanted to talk to me at once when we got to the ambulance. I remember the expressions of uncertainty on all, but one. The driver was a big muscular guy who had a grin from ear to ear. He patted the back of his seat over his head and said, put the lady up here by me. He then asked if they could take a minute or two to recite to me their experiences with my rescue. Apparently, they all had never seen anything like it. I was going to be covered up, my face, when I started hollering a prayer. The paramedics and fire rescue all jumped and started swearing. Then they listened to my incantation, dumbfounded. I went from silence to shouting. Not present, to very present. The driver told me that I was going to make the annals of the stories they told for years to come. I do not give out the details of my incantation. However, it involves acknowledging the trinity in blue flame, and a sword. Yup, I do believe that the incantation has power independent of any person reciting it. I also know the incantation goes back in time prior to the beginnings of organized religion. I do not know how the reciting of it aided me. I only know they all heard me in my mother's kitchen that night. Upon reflection, I do know that I had to fight, struggle, to not give in to the experience. Scientifically, I cannot imagine that my experience is more than a yarn. There are gaps of awareness in the transitions I experienced. The emotions were intense, mostly extreme determination to stay. I can remember the tunnel vividly, the emotions emanating off those walking past me, speaking in hushed tones, some comforting each other, quiet reverence, and fear. There was never any awe or jubilation coming from anyone. The tunnel had groups and individuals passing through. I have since seen photos of tunnels that look exactly like the one in which we were. Maybe other tunnels carry happier versions of what I was experiencing. There was no happiness or joy involved. I was taken to Stanford Hospital. I was diagnosed with lack of arterial oxygen. I was on an oxygen machine for an entire year of almost around-the-clock use. I still use oxygen from time to time. Seven years have passed. I went to many near-death sites and was totally discouraged. I just found the website tonight in a fit of insomnia. I am certain that I had an out-of-body experience. My oldest child has a doctorate in biological anthropology. She would like to insist that my brain was creating the entire experience, that all near-death experiences are the brain's activity, nothing more. Over the years, my son has not wanted to disclose much of anything until maybe the last year or so. At which times he has confirmed what the paramedics divulged. He also has been exceptional at remembering details. He has had mild post-traumatic symptoms that he is now able to process. I am grateful to be here in this body, in this life. My first grandchild was born five months ago. I desire to help my son with his college education, and to be around to fulfill my desires with a career in the healing arts. 
I am grateful for this experience. My wish is that somehow this experience will impart information that will be helpful in some manner. Thank you.